Ben, ben. Le secret. Et je ne dirai à personne d'autre que vous, mademoiselle. Et l'emploi de poivre vert. Ah, oh, green peppercorns. Exactement. Oh. Au lieu de frango noir. Why, of course, they're green. <rire> Mais les grains de poivre vert doivent rester entiers. Jamais, jamais, jamais vous ne devez les écraser. Écrasez-les et vous pouvez tout aussi bien jeter tout le repas par la fenêtre. Pouf C'est très, très important. I promise to remember. <rire> Un peu plus de café pour vous et le colonel Oh, I don't think so. Look, it's 9.30, past the colonel's bedtime. <rire> Je comprends très bien. In fact, the little devil is napping now. You know, he often takes a little snooze between dessert and coffee. Helps build up his strength for the long walk to the car. <laughs> Désirez-vous autre chose, mademoiselle? Oh, no, thank you, André. Just the check. No. The mere presence of an outrageously overinflated bill always arouses him. <laughs> <laughs> Comme il vous plaira, mademoiselle. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. We enjoyed it. Very soothing. Mademoiselle, c'est un whopper. Oh! <laughs> André! <laughs> Bonsoir. Bonsoir, mademoiselle. Oh, dear. Baby, if you've ever wondered, wondered whatever became of me, I'm living on the air in Cincinnati, Cincinnati WKRP. Got kind of pack packing and unpacking, from town to town, up and down the in a while I'm at WKRP in Cincinnati Good morning, Andy Oh, hey, good morning Uh, look, Jennifer you didn't have to come in today It's no problem I am sorry to hear about the Colonel Thank you, Andy Oh, there you are, Jennifer Yes Uh I'm, I'm sorry, Jennifer. I'm, I'm, I'm truly sorry. You, you shouldn't have come in today. Now, why don't you go home? Yeah, sure. Please, really. I need to keep busy. Thank you for your concern, but I am just fine. Fine? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <sighs> Jennifer, I, I don't know what to say. Neither do I. Well, do what I do. Put your fist through the wall. <laughs> said the wrong thing. I said the wrong thing. <laughs> the colonel always called me a good little soldier, and that is exactly what I'm going to be. Sure. Hey, look at the positive side of things. He was a nice man. He was a wonderful man who lived 80 very full years, but his last years were his happiest. Why was that? <laughs> oh, I, I, I see, yeah. <laughs> And he did a wonderful thing for me. He left you a million dollars. Wrong thing. I said the wrong thing. <laughs> one night, well, one night, right in the middle of Parcheesi, the colonel's eyes opened and he said, Jennifer, I want you to be the executrix of my estate, just like that. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he doesn't trust any of his family, and I'm going to see that his wishes are carried out to the letter. What would you guess was involved here? Maybe a couple of hundred thousand? Uh, well, millions for sure. Perhaps even billions. There's so much to count. Oh, Tough job. I don't mind. 
The colonel knew I was getting restless. I, I'd mastered seven languages, just about finished the lobby here. He knew I needed another project. <laughs> well, he, he's a darn thoughtful man, wasn't he? <laughs> so I've been thinking about Jennifer, you know, and what she's going through, and I think she ought to get out and do some. That sounds right. Problem is, what do you do with Jennifer? <laughs> know what I mean. We live in two different worlds. That's what I mean. It's like I like to go to police auctions, stuff like that. I know. Why don't you take her where you took me? You know that store that has every last issue of Captain Marvel comics? Yeah, that would cheer her up. No, I think it's something. Hi, West. I'm Les. <laughs> Time for half hour update. Card inserted. Inserted. Noise about to end. Record's almost over. Then let's go to work. <laughs> Time for the half hour news update with Les Nessman. Top of the day, Death Watch. Ask not for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for Colonel H. Buchanan, one of the wealthiest men in Ohio. He died last evening at a local restaurant. The Colonel was a decorated veteran of both world wars, beloved by his men of the fighting 42nd Division, who called him Old Ironhead. <laughs> in peace, Colonel Buchanan returned to Cincinnati, where he amassed his great fortune through real estate, high finance, and women's nylons. <laughs> Later, he turned his attention to a political career, highlighted by a 1968 shoving match with then Vice President Spiro Agnew. Spiro! <laughs> At the time of his untimely death, the 80-year-old colonel was in the company of a young blonde woman. The Buchanan family claims not to know her identity, but say the colonel had recently developed an interest in gold diggers and blonde floozies. Um, the, um, the colonel will be buried, I suppose. Jennifer? Oh, hello, Bailey. What are you doing? Thinking. About what? Well, this morning it was the nature of existence. Around noon, I began to embrace the philosophy of Camus. Existentialism is perhaps the answer. <laughs> is this the evening paper? Uh huh. May I see it? Sure. Read what it says in the article there about the blonde floozy. Jennifer, where do they get this stuff? From the family. I'm the executrix of the Colonel's will, and so they're trying to get me, and they're also trying to contest the will. Well, I guess I'll go. Uh, listen, you're gonna be all right? Sure. Oh, good. Boy, your hair sure is beautiful today, Jennifer. Spun gold. <laughs> I, I, I love it like that. Yes, sir. Are you going to fight him? I guess I'm going to have to. Your, your hair is nice, too, Bailey. <laughs> Thank you. Right, right, yeah. Well, do you think the Colonel... Well, uh... Left me a lot of money? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I asked him not to. And if he does, it'll make him look like an old coot with the hots for a younger woman, which is, of course, what he was. <laughs> but in an utterly charming way. Oh, I'm going to miss the coot. Oh, Jennifer, it will get better with time. I know. It's just that I'm not looking forward to the next couple of days. I have to go to the funeral, and I have to go to the lawyer's office. I just wish the colonel had left me out of this. Jennifer, come on. I'll walk you to your car. Oh, thank you. There you go. Here. Thanks. Mm -hmm. What is an executrix? I don't know. High heels and a whole lot of leather. Something like that. <laughs> uh, 
All right, here's one from the great Marvin Gaye, the original all-time classic, I Heard It Through the Grapevine. You heard it on the radio. From another all-time classic, the mighty KRP in Cincinnati, this is The Doctor, and it's 947. Good morning, Johnny. Hi, Jennifer. How are you feeling today? I'm fine. Good. You ought to get out and do things, you know? Kind of take your mind off things. You ever been to night court? Where? Night court. No, I haven't. Oh, oh, oh. Boy, I hang out down there a lot, you know? <laughs> Last week, they caught this guy. They had him in there with 106 television sets. 106? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, if you ever uh, free in the evening, if you like stepping out, uh, give me a call. Thank you, Johnny. I, I will. Okay. Oh, Jennifer. How are you? I'm just fine, Les. Boy, people really don't know what to say when someone's died. Well, you know, it, it, it's, uh, well, you know, at, at least with most people, it's like, well, it's, you know, it, but sometimes... The funeral's tomorrow. Good. No, no, not good. <laughs> I mean that it is tomorrow. That's, that's the thing, of course. I'm sorry I've made everyone feel so uncomfortable. Oh, no, Jennifer, not uncomfortable. Uh, sort of sorry. Sad. Sorry for a friend. I guess there's nothing else to be said. I guess not. I'm going to take these uh, albums to the booth. <laughs> Okay. Goodbye. Oh, <laughs> uh, hey, Jenny, I didn't get a chance to tell you how sorry I am that that Colonel guy bought the farm. <laughs> hey, you had a long life, a lot of dough. Got to go out with you. Caught the Big bus while he was eating in the best joint in town. Not bad if you ask me. Sometimes I like you, Herb. You really have a way with words. Hey, I'm in sales. <laughs> Love you. How's Jennifer? Well, much better. But hey, she got quite a little write-up in today's paper. May I come in? Oh, uh, yes, of course. Have you seen this? Yes, I guess you have. Well, the Colonel's relatives have really gone too far. It is not known if the industrialist woman companion is employed. Oh, look, Jennifer, I'm not so sure you should go to this funeral with this kind of publicity here. I'm not even sure if I'll be allowed, but I am going. Mr. Carlson, will you take me? Well, you bet. I'll, I'll handle everything. And the Travis, I think you got to call the newspaper and straighten those people out. I agree. Oh, uh, no, no, don't do that. No, then they'll just know who I am, and I'll never get any peace. I just want to be left alone. Oh, I'm, I'm tired. I'm really just tired. Oh. Well, look, Jennifer, um, just stay here. Nothing ever goes on in here. It's a nice place to be. <laughs> Bye-bye. They back yet? Not yet. Oh, hey. How'd it go? I never saw anything like it. Where's Jennifer? I took her home. Well, what happened? It was like a three-ring circus. The press was there, television cameras, newspaper photographers, people running all over the place, trampling on the flowers. No respect, no respect at all. Well, why? It, because they were all fighting to get a picture of the blonde mystery woman when they saw how pretty she really was. All heck broke loose. <laughs> that was a funeral. Oh, Mr. Carlson, why don't you just sit down here? And then one reporter shouts, Hey, look, she's with another old coot. <laughs> <laughs> Not 
exactly a kid anymore, but I'm not a coochster either. Just about taught that young man some respect. Look, how's Jennifer taking all this? Well, she's pretty shaken up, of course. I mean, flash bulbs going off in her face. People are asking questions like, hey, lady, you, you and this guy live together? <laughs> Maybe I should just go over to her house and stay with her for a while. That's a good idea. And tell her to forget about mystery floozies and wills. Now, I want her to start on her vacation. It's starting right now. Yes, sir. The front door is this way, young lady. D yes, but, but my purse is back here. As you wish. <laughs> Travis, hold on. <laughs> me. Why, me? I looked up executive tricks. It has nothing to do with high heels and leather. <laughs> was called for 3 p.m. It's 10 past now. I just wanted to make sure everyone was here. Everybody is here. Hello. Mr. Kennington, I'm Jennifer Marlowe. How do you do? As you can see, I've changed my mind. Yeah, good, I was hoping you'd come. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I uh, guess I should introduce everyone. Starting on my left. Cedric Buchanan, brother of the deceased. Floris Buchanan, sister. Chester, another brother. And Skip Buchanan, nephew. And this is Miss Jennifer Marlowe, a friend of the deceased and executrix of the will. I resent her presence. I don't like having an outsider here. She's not family. She's good looking, though. <laughs> Miss Marlowe has every legal right to be here. Uh, Gentlemen. Oh, why don't we begin? And this may be out of the ordinary, but it's all perfectly legal. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd all care to watch the screen. Good afternoon, everyone. Cedric, Cloris, Cesar. <laughs> All the greedy relatives here. Oh, that's good. Oh, I, I like this little scene. By the way, I, I've got me some executrix, huh? That's Jennifer. Say hello, Jennifer. Hello. She's sweet, isn't she? You're damn right she is. <laughs> <laughs> One woman I can count on. How you holding up, honey? Fine. Good. I, I knew this come through for me. Oh, now, wait, wait, before I start, I'd like to say something. Do you remember those times I used to fall asleep? Well, I wasn't asleep. I heard every damn thing that each one of you said about me. <laughs> all right, now that's all taken care of, let's, let's begin. Uh, to my brother Cedric, I leave nothing. <laughs> because he's always been an all-or-nothing type of fellow, and since he can't have it all, he gets nothing. <laughs> well, I paid his bills for the last 40 years, and a free ride on the Buchanan gravy train is over. Did you save anything, Senator? No. No. <laughs> no, I didn't think so. But to my sister, Chloris, I leave nothing. <laughs> Same reason. <laughs> to my brother, Chester, I'd like to leave less than nothing. <laughs> but that dumb lawyer of mine, he can't figure out how to do that. <laughs> and to my nephew, oh, Skip, <laughs> who's always bragging about his van, to him, I leave some advice. Get a car, people, and see you around on the highway. You're blocking everybody's vision, you... <laughs> now for Jennifer Morrow. To her, I leave exactly one dollar. She asked me not to leave her anything, but 
This happens to be the first dollar I ever earned. And there is a sentimental attachment. I love you, darling. You're a good soldier. And now, all the rest of my estate, every damn cent of it, goes to the Harry Krishnas. <laughs> promise to stay out of the airport. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I'm only kidding. Actually, the balance of my estate is to be spent on a parade. A parade! I want a parade honoring the veterans of my old unit, the Fighting 42nd. Round them up, Jennifer. Round them up and bring them here. And give them a parade. And when it's over, well, divide the rest of the money. Give it to the men of the 42nd, and if they're deceased, give it to their families. Now, look, dear, don't, don't you try and do all this yourself. No, no, that's too difficult. You, you hire a staff to do that. I think my brother Cedric's looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it, folks. Nice knowing you. Now I suggest you go to your corners and come out fighting. <laughs> Mr. Kennington, this is not a will. What we have here is the ramblings of a, of a senile old man who has fallen under the spell of it. I don't think we'll have any trouble convincing a judge that my brother was incompetent. Uh, I'm not so sure a judge would find that going out with Miss Marlowe here was all that incompetent. <laughs> Just might prove his mind was clear as a bell. <laughs> but a parade, I mean, really. It's insane. It's, it's frivolous. It's going to start around 2, probably last until around 7. I'm going to pick a nice summer's day when all the kids are out of school. Well, I can see we're going to have a fight on our hands. Just as big as you'd like to make it. Come on, Chorus. There's no point in staying. None whatsoever. I always thought he was asleep. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thank you. I guess I have a lot of work to do. Uh, oh, Miss Marlowe, uh, have you got one of these tape machines at home? I have several. Uh, well, uh, there's another tape. I guess the Colonel wanted you to watch it when you're alone. Thank you. Mm. Goodbye. Goodbye. 